Hi, I'm Kristen. This is Crafting with Kristen. Today we're going to be doing a really cool painting project. We're going to make a hand-painted Iron Maiden glass featuring Eddie off the Killers album. And if you don't have a wine glass or you don't prefer to drink wine, you can also do it on a beer glass, you can do it on a champagne flute, soda glass, glass coffee mug, or if you got a special someone in your life that you want to make a cool gift for, you could do a glass flower vase. Imagine getting a nice bouquet in something like this. It would definitely be a cool little uh, something for someone. All right, so basically what you're gonna need is you're gonna need whatever type of glass you're gonna be painting on. You're gonna need a little tray to keep your paints in. Um, I like these just little cheapo ones from Walmart or the dollar store. You'll need some paint brushes, something with a fine point like these little guys. And you're gonna want something that's um, the artist quality ones. You don't wanna go budget and get like the little dollar store or Walmart craft ones. They tend to not really get as even of a line and they, they're they just not that great. Just don't go budget, go ahead and spend the extra money and get one of these. The last thing that you're gonna need is you're going to need some glass paint. I highly recommend this Martha Stewart brand glass paint. It works really well and I've used mine on all my glassware that I've made over the years and they've survived many runs of hand washing and tons and tons of bottles of wine. All right, so go ahead and pour yourself a glass of your favorite beverage and let's get crafting. All right, so we're gonna get our reference photos ready. I prefer working with a reference photo as opposed to a computer screen or a phone screen, but you could do that if you don't have the resources to print. So first we're gonna clean off the glass a little bit with some rubbing alcohol. This step is optional, but it's nice, especially if you're getting a glass from like a thrift store or something that might have oils from people's hands touching it and stuff. some white paint and I'm going to start tracing Eddie's head. Basically I'm doing a circle and I'm doing this weird kind of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, almost like a banana shape on the bottom. And then I'm going to draw an X right in the middle where his eyes are going to be. And this part's kind of easy to just sort of wing it. You're going to give him a real big head of hair. It's almost kind of like the top of it is like drawing a heart shape but then it all just kind of flares out. The more erratic you have his hair, the better. Now I'm gonna start tracing around that X shape, and I'm kind of doing like a little diamond shape for his eyes. And then I'm putting two little dots underneath the bottom half of the X for his nose, and then outlining kind of a odd little smile shape. It's almost kind of like the scream mask sort of a shape for his mouth. And he has all these cool little like lines and wrinkles around his face. So like along the edge where his smile is, I'm kind of marking some like dark little lines and stuff. Right along where his hair meets his face, I want a lot of dark shadows around there. So I am marking it with some black paint. Now I'm gonna fill in his eyes. start layering some like kind of white and gray paint where his hair is gonna be. This part's really fun especially if you're a beginner painter because his hair is extremely erratic so you really just kind of want to wing it and blend in this weird sort of like whitish gray and then you'll get to do a bunch of crazy little lines in it towards the end of this. When you're first starting the painting it's important not to beat yourself up too much about having everything perfect. It's going to look awkward and weird for the beginning stages of painting and then you'll start to work out the fine lines and details. Now I'm blocking in that kind of little square shape where I'm going to have his mouth but it kind of has a little curve off to the right hand side. Now I'm marking the dark black around where his hair is going to hang over his face. And I've probably got about all the paint that I can layer on there for now. So I'm going to let it dry for a little bit and then come back to it. Now that my paint's dried and I'm coming back into it, I'm marking more black onto where the little eyes are. And I'm starting to draw around the nose line. And then I'm marking that line where his smile is going to be. And then I'm following it with the same shape for little wrinkles along the edges of his face. 
now I'm marking the outside of his smile. About halfway through, I'm marking where the teeth are gonna be. I like to start with that horizontal line and then draw in the teeth later. I'm also blocking in more black along the left-hand side where his hair is gonna be. This is gonna give it a lot of depth. Now I'm marking that eyebrow ridge where we had drawn the X before. I'm almost kind of connecting the eyes with a black line. We can come through later with some white paint and some gray paint and really build up the layers. Now I'm blocking in more white for where his hair is gonna be. It's okay if there's like random patches of gray and stuff like that. You wanna be really gestural with your brush strokes for that. And what I mean by that is kind of just the uh, kind of fling in the brush around. Not being very precise and with control when you do that part. Filling in some more white to get a good base around the forehead. The main thing is keeping kind of that X shape but without actually showing that you drew an X. And then I'm giving it a nice little crisp white ridge where his lip would be. I'm also doing the same with the chin and I'm building up some white along where his teeth are gonna be. Now I'm gonna start marking where I'm gonna do the Iron Maiden logo. basically block letters kind of with some flair to it. It's a lot of straight lines. So just kind of take it one letter at a time and start to look at how the shape is. One of the iconic things that really makes it recognizable is that weird kind of almost a diamond shaped O in the lettering. And it's kind of a diamond shape almost in the R as well. And then that weird little uh, kind of triangle where the A shape is. Those are the things that are really gonna make this scream Iron Maiden. Now that we've let that dry a little bit, we're gonna get back to work on all this crazy hair. I might seem like a madman building up all these white and gray layers, but there's really a method to it. So now I'm kind of starting to work fine little white lines that are super crisp around where I had that black outline by his face. And I'm filling in some more white around the forehead. I'm kind of doing a like an upside down U shape around where his nose is. And then I'm doing a, a U underneath, right along underneath where I put the little dots for his nose. And I'm being careful not to erase that little line I did by his smile. Building up some more white on the left hand side of his hair and then bringing up that crisp white along the chin. Building up some more white along that logo. I'm gonna put some red paint over it, but I'm putting down a white base because it's a lot easier to make that red pop this way than layering up the red multiple times. The white seems to be more opaque in this brand of paint than the red is. It's okay if your letters are a little bit sloppy because we are gonna outline them in black, which is gonna help hide any imperfections you have in it now. Now we're gonna let that dry for a little bit. And now that it's dried for a little while, we're coming back to that. Join a little bit of wine. I'm gonna need some more paint. After your paint sits for a little while, it tends to get kind of gunky and is not fun to work with. So it's important to use a fresh batch of paint every time you come back and start painting again. So I'm layering down some more of that white paint for where I'm gonna have the hair. Now that I got a good base of that white paint going, I'm gonna take black paint and I'm gonna start drawing little lines. Kind of think of uh, where your roots would be and even if 
you know, maybe Eddie just has perfectly white hair, we're still gonna put some roots there because everybody kind of has a little bit of shadow where their hair starts. And then think about where a shine would be in your hair. And we're gonna leave that part white and we're gonna kind of trace little gray lines sporadically around right underneath and right above them. One tip that a fellow artist had told me about drawing and painting hair and fur that people don't really think about, they all think about the individual lines and they just do these straight little stringy lines and it's really more like drawing a form. So you wanna think about it the same way you would shade a sphere. It's just, you kinda of have little points on the end of it. So you wanna kinda of do a gradient from a dark to a light, then back to like a medium gray, then to a dark again. And you're just doing this with wispy little brush strokes. See how on the bottom of the hair I have all that gray, but then it kinda of fades up to white, goes to a gray again, goes to a white, and then goes to another gray. It's kinda of like painting stripes, but with a, uh, it's like painting stripes with little, little hairs and little scratches all along them. Now I'm taking black and I'm going over the edges of all the little gray areas. You kind of want to keep it out of most of the pure white areas because you want that to have kind of a, a shine or where the light's hitting it. So you only want to kind of do the sporadic little black lines where you have a lot of gray. The nice thing about this wild, crazy hair of Eddie's is it allows a lot of mistakes because it's supposed to look messy and it's not supposed to look clean and perfect. Now I'm gonna start outlining his eyebrows. I kinda wanna do a line down the middle of his forehead and I'm also gonna trace some of the outlines uh, around the edges of his eyes and above where his eyebrows would sit. I'm bringing back that little mouth line and I'm adding some more along the edges of it as well. If you make a mistake, you can always cover it up with white paint. And then I'm doing a bunch of little vertical lines tracing around where his nose meets the top of his mouth. I'm mostly using a medium gray for this and I might come back in a few areas and do some white. I'm painting in his gums and I'm doing sort of a M's and U shapes along where the teeth are. Now I'm starting to add some gray where the bottom of his jaw is, and then some more gray on the left-hand side of his face. Starting with that area around the roots, kind of tracing along the where his face meets the hair. I'm following the same concept of using the texture of the hair with the little fine lines, but thinking about a form where we're going from a gradient of a dark gray to a middle gray to a white, then back down to a middle gray to a dark gray to a white. Kind of in almost a stripe pattern, but we're disguising it with little hair brush strokes. All right, now I'm gonna switch paint colors and I'm getting a little bit of white and I'm dotting the eyes. This is one of those tricks that really brings a painting to life. Now I'm gonna start just adding little dots to kind of outline the teeth very carefully and with control. And that bottom little lip ridge. Now I'm bringing a little crispness to some of the hair and some of the bottom of the chin and that little lip line. Now we're gonna take some black paint and go back to doing some outlining. This is the step where the glass stops looking so awkward and just kind of like erratic and when you add in all these crisp little black lines it really starts to come together and make sense. So we're tracing down a lot of the lines that we've already made with the gray. We're just going very thin and precise with the black paint. The nice thing about doing these fine little black lines at the end is you've had a chance to work with the paint and sort of deal with the awkwardness and learn how to get control over it. Basically, I'm taking all those little gray markers that I did for all the wrinkles and lines in his face, and I'm just doing thin little lines of black all around there. I'm also 
tracing that little smile line and then doing a lot of little black lines along where the top lip meets the teeth. I'm outlining all the teeth with a thin little bit of black, but I'm also still leaving some of that gray there. You don't want to completely outline it, you just want to give sort of the impression. Now I'm going to do some of those little black lines along the part of the hair that meets the face. You don't want them to come all the way down, you kind of want your lines to be short. The more short and sporadic they are, the more they're going to create this wild texture to the hair. Now I'm getting some of my red paint and I'm going to start outlining the Iron Maiden logo. You can be a little sloppy with this because we are going to go over it again with the black paint to outline it and make it look all nice and clean. some more wine all right now that we've let the red paint dry for a little while we're gonna go ahead and start outlining it with some white paint this one you want to be a little bit more controlled with but I'm also going to outline it with a little bit of black paint to hide any imperfections One thing that I tend to do with the logos, but I don't tend to do when I'm actually painting, is working from left to right because I'm right-handed. The nice thing about this is it prevents you from smearing paint all over your painting project. But another way that you can work around it is you can just rotate the way that you're holding the wine glass if you tend to smudge it with the palm of your hand. Another trick you can do is you can use your pinky finger to steady your hand and to keep your hand from touching the glass. I'm taking that black paint and I'm very carefully outlining in between where the white paint meets the black paint. If you make mistakes, you can always paint over a little bit, but I'm really trying to be as controlled as I can with these fine little black lines. Remember, your painting project isn't going to be perfect, especially on your first go. You should just be totally stoked that you managed to make something on your own that's as cool as this. Handmade objects should totally have a personal touch, and you should be able to tell that they are. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to place our glassware into a nice cool oven. It's important not to preheat it. If the oven's hot when you put cool glassware in it, you run the risk of cracking the glassware. And then that's all that hard work you put into it, just completely gone. Now I'm gonna warm the oven up to 350 now that I have my glassware in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for 30 minutes. It's important that your glassware is dry before you bake it. Now that it's set in the oven for 30 minutes, you can open the oven to let it cool and then safely remove your glassware. You wanna make sure that it slowly cools down just like when we put it into the oven. You can use a pot holder to remove it if you're worried that the item might still be hot. Cheers! I hope that you had fun making this project with me. 
If you like the way that your project turned out, make sure to tag me in social media so I can see what we created together. If there's projects that you want to work on in the future, leave a comment below so I know what to do for my next video. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for crafting with me.